even bigger plans for the future. And they didn't include the other new moves. In the meantime, the full troop of Indian numbers took over the Western world. With them, European navigators found it easier to calculate their latitude and so dared to cross the great ocean out of sight of land. That's how they stumbled on America. And the new numbers became the vocabulary of modern banking as we know it. But there was still plenty of room for that old problem, human error. <laughs> Columbus thought he'd got to Japan, when in fact he'd got to the West Indies, half the world away. He'd made a mistake, humans do, which was something one man was determined to stop. It all happened around about 16... Well, there you are, you've got it again. Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz was one of the greatest mathematicians of all time. He set out to rid mankind of the curse of human error. In trying to do this, Leibniz invented something that still affects us every day of our lives. What's more, it's an invention that was to give our old friend Juan the chance to rule the world. Leibniz was convinced that he could eradicate error by inventing a mechanical calculating machine. And in fact, he built one, using all the numerals from zero to nine. But then, he had a better idea, and it was one that was inspired by his philosophy. It is true that as the empty voids and dismal wilderness belong to zero, So the spirit of God and his light belong to the all-powerful one. In other words, to paraphrase Leibniz very, very, very loosely, the universe is a bit like a Swiss cheese, which some of us have suspected for years. The holes are just as important as the cheese itself. So to construct the world, you need both something, good old number one, and also lots of nothing, which is where zero comes in. Leibniz was convinced that one and zero were the only numbers that anyone really needed. With these two numbers, he claimed, he could achieve every mathematical dream and, what's more, eliminate human error. So he got rid of the other numbers and developed a system using just ones and zeros. It's called the binary system. And yet, wait a minute, how could you possibly express all numbers just with a, a one and a zero? I think it's time I spoke to someone who knows what he's talking about. Marcus! I need to understand the binary system. Binary. Okay, let me give you a number in binary. Okay. Here is the number nine written in binary. So this is just using ones and zeros ones to and express zeros. any number. It's just zeros and ones. So that's nine in binary. Well, it looks like a thousand and one to me. That's because you're obsessed with your ten fingers and you like to keep track of things in tens. Well, this one keeps track of how many ones, the second column of how many tens there are, next how many hundreds, and one lot of a thousand. But in binary, things work rather differently. In binary, what the columns keep track of is how many ones, how many twos, how many fours, and how many eights there are. Here we have an egg. We're only allowed to represent these um, numbers using zeros and ones. Yeah. Okay, so, so we're only allowed either to put an egg in or not have an egg. An egg in is one. An egg represents one. So let me show you what nine is in binary. One lot of eight, so I have an egg in the fourth column. It's a one. Yeah, that's one lot of eight in the fourth column. And nine is eight plus one, so I need a one in the ones column. So in binary, the number nine is one lot of eight, no fours, no twos, and one one. Amazing. But what about the other numbers? Well, after just three short hours of tuition, I began to see that it was possible, after all, to make every number 
using just wands and not wands. What's more, I became convinced that you don't need to do it with eggs. It's a sort of mechanical system. It's very mechanical to add the ones and zeros, and that's why it's perfect for a machine. And a machine doesn't really care too much about how big the numbers get. It, it can keep track of very long numbers, whilst we're not very good at doing that. What it's interested in is a very efficient way of adding numbers. That's why machines love to put numbers into binary. And Leibniz designed exactly such a binary machine. Only his was using metal balls dropping into slots instead of eggs and egg cups. From now on, mistakes would be a thing of the past. The digital age, it seemed, was ready to take over the world. Unfortunately, he never built it. One and zero would have to wait another 265 years before they could step into the limelight. Meet Colossus, the world's first working binary computer. It's Leibniz's dream made real. But instead of dropping metal balls into slots, Colossus is electronic. In here, one and zero, something and nothing, have finally come into their element as electrical currents, on and off. Colossus was created during the Second World War and installed here in Britain's code-breaking centre at Bletchley Park. It has 1,200 valves, miles of wires, hundreds of mechanical components. But just like all computers today, the beating heart of this machine is one and zero. In their electronic binary form, one and zero performed millions of rapid calculations, enough to crack the enemy's codes before the Germans had even sharpened their pencils. Thanks to Colossus, the Allies knew what the German messages said even before Hitler did. And it may be that this extraordinary contraption helped shorten the war by as much as two years. <laughs>